cool. All right, so pandas methods for importing and exporting data. So you can see all of these different functions right here. Yes, this is, this is a really amazing thing. This is typically what you'll tend to use, pandas.read CSV. You can actually read in a CSV file. So CSV file stands for comma separated values. Um, so note that basically this is typically a pretty standard way of people passing in uh, data. Know that even though it's a CSV, meaning comma, it does not necessarily mean that the CSV actually is separated with commas. It could be separated by tabs. It could be separated by semicolons. I've seen people using pipes, which is like, if you guys don't know what a pipe is, like this. Um, I've also seen this funky thing. I don't even know why they separated it like this way. Like this is just this is a comma, whatever. But what's really nice is that a read.csv basically takes in a data that is separated by some what we call a delimiter. Basically, this is the thing that separates the data out. Okay. We can also read in, hey, check this out, Excel files. So if you have an Excel file and someone goes like, oh, can you give me the CSV? It's like, all I have is an Excel file. You can just read that in directly into Pandas, which just makes it super, super easy and nice and convenient. Um, we also have some other parts of JSON files, which we'll talk about when we talk about APIs, especially. Um, we can also read a data, data frame from a dictionary. So you can actually take a Python dictionary that's already made and load it into um, a Pandas data frame. And then also we can do the opposite of this, where we can take a data frame and convert it to a CSV file or to an Excel file or to a JSON file or a dictionary file. So this allows us to talk to people who might not be familiar with data science or not familiar with our specific tools. We can actually pass this information along. Um, if you ever work with people who are really used to Excel and you say something a CSV, they like flip out. They're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but really a CSV can be exported into an Excel file really easily. So this makes it nice and convenient. Okay. So nice things to look out for. Um, now I put a little note here for uh, fun def functions versus Lambda functions. Think def functions like out of our normal functions and Lambda functions being like um, our special, you know, one case use functions. We'll talk more about this um, another time, but I just put a little note in here is that Lambda functions, um, I think I mentioned this before, are basically just def functions, but they're just one liners that are very useful. Um, so you'll typically use them in map, dot apply, and dot apply map. So I put a couple links here within this notebook that you can find, right? Um, to kind of just talk about like why you would use these different things and like how you would use them. Um, but this will typically, like these three functions and Lambda functions, you will see that everywhere in Pandas just because it makes it so convenient writing it through. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I don't wanna go too far into all of this without, just cause we're low on time. Well, we have like about a minute left. Um, I will kind of put this out a little bit. Um, some methods for formatting, cleaning data. You can do some things like changing as type. This is actually going through, um, I think the curriculum actually goes through some of this stuff as well as the Python data science handbook. Um, but basically there's some nice things where you can convert, you know, a column, you know, data frame as a certain type or you can rename a column or rename things or drop information or set an index and stuff like this. Um, there's a whole bunch of, you know, documentation, a whole bunch of things you can do in Pandas. Do you need to know it all? Shake your heads at this point. Yeah, good, good. You don't have to know it all because, you know, you're perfect. Like, it is something that, you know, some people will pick up things and they'll find a nice way of doing it. And then they'll find another way. It's like, oh, wow, I never knew about this. Um, this is kind of like similar to the imposter syndrome, right? You don't have to know everything to be good at data science or even be called a data scientist. Um, I will say is that sometimes it can feel very much like, like oh my gosh, there's so many different things you can do. Um, at worst, you know who your friend is? Google's your friend. Google's your friend. You can always search for Google on Google. Um, and don't feel ashamed of that because that is 100% you know, uh, typical, all right? Um, so I think I'm gonna stop it here, but um, just to kind of show you a little bit is that next time maybe we'll talk about accessing data with Pandas, then we'll talk about cleaning data and stuff like this. Um, I make that really brief and stuff like that. And then um, let's see here, next week on Tuesday, we'll talk about uh, data visualization. And I'll also talk about a little bit like, what about you can do with data visualizations. I go a little bit of a rant of saying why I'm not a fan of pie charts and stuff like that. You'll hear people talk about these things, um, but we'll talk about data visualization next time too, okay?